This is a video where it's better to show, not tell. We'll discuss how powerful AI assistants can be for your engineering, especially in 2025 after the demo. While you're watching this, feel free to comment and share what capabilities you would want your engineering personal AI assistant to have. Hey, Ada. Hey, Dan. How can I help you today? Ada, go ahead and scrape to a file from my clipboard. The content has been successfully scraped and saved to the file Structured Outputs Introduction Guide.md. Is there anything else you would like to do with this file? Ada, can you go ahead and update the Structured Outputs Introduction Guide file? Let's go ahead and clean it up, remove some of the formatting. We have some lists of numbers that don't need to be there. Let's just clean it up and focus on the use case of Structured Outputs and the code examples surrounding it. Use a reasoning model for this. Structured Outputs Introduction Guide has been cleaned up and revised with a focus on the use case of structured outputs and relevant code examples. The reasoning model was used for this task. Nice job, Ada. Go ahead and load that file into our active memory. The Structured Outputs Introduction Guide file has been loaded into our active memory. How can I assist you further? Nice shot, Beta. Go ahead and use the Structured Outputs Introduction Guide as an example, and let's create a new Python file with examples on how exactly to use Structured Outputs. Go ahead and create a new file, a new Python file for us with runnable code. Use a reasoning model for this. Python file structured outputs examples.py has been created with examples on how to use structured outputs. Feel free to check it out and run the code. All right, Ada, can you go ahead and run that code for us? Go ahead and run Python on that file. The code in structured outputs examples.py has been run successfully. Would you like to see the output? No, that's okay. I have it right here. I can see the output here in this file. Thank you. You're welcome. If you need any more help, just let me. Ada, go ahead and scrape to a file from my clipboard. Go ahead and take this URL, scrape it. Create a markdown document for us. The content from the URL has been scraped and saved to a markdown document named OpenAI Swarm Overview.md. Let me know if you need any further assistance. Cool, yeah, let's go ahead and just discuss this file. Uh, just briefly, tell me what this is all about. What is OpenAI Swarm? The file outlines OpenAI Swarm, which is an experimental educational framework for multi-agent orchestration. It showcases concepts for coordinating and executing agents primarily using the Chat Completions API. OpenAI Swarm is designed for educational purposes rather than production, allowing developers to explore lightweight, scalable, and customizable agent patterns and functions. 
Okay, can you walk me through a couple use cases of this? Let's just keep discussing our OpenAI Swarm overview document. Uh, what are some use cases of this and how does it differ from other multi-agent tools? OpenAI Swarm is designed to help developers learn about multi-agent orchestration through an educational approach. It emphasizes lightweight, ergonomic agent orchestration with a focus on handoffs and routines. Some use cases for OpenAI Swarm include developers can use it to understand and experiment with multi-agent systems dynamics without the complexities of a full production environment. It is useful for developers to explore different agent coordination and execution patterns. OpenAI Swarm differs from other multi-agent tools in the following ways. Experimental and educational, it is built for exploration and learning rather than for deployment in a production environment. Statelessness, unlike some established tools with stateful capabilities, Swarm maintains statelessness between interactions, focusing on handoffs and routines. Overall, OpenAI Swarm serves as a learning tool for developers to grasp the essentials of multi-agent systems without the overhead of more complex production-focused platforms. Hey, to go ahead and delete the OpenAI Swarm overview file, force delete, and then after that, go ahead and clear our uh, active memory. Go ahead and reset our active memory, uh, force delete. The OpenAI Swarm overview file has been deleted and the active memory has been reset. If you need further assistance, feel free to let me know. Hey, to go ahead and scrape to a file from my clipboard. The content has been scraped from your clipboard and saved to the file OpenAI API Pricing Guide.md in the scratch path. Wonderful. Can you go ahead and update that document and just simplify it a lot? Um, I just want a clear breakdown of pricing, just single headers and then the pricing of every single model right below that. Super blunt, simple bullet points. Break down the pricing for me. Go ahead and use a state-of-the-art model for this. Let's update the OpenAI API pricing guide markdown file and uh, at the top of the file, can you go ahead and add a CSV table with the model name, the input pricing, and then the output pricing? And then can you also just add a um, estimated average token pricing as a uh, final column? Go ahead and use a state-of-the-art model for this. Hey, to go ahead and create a new empty CSV file, call it model pricing. The empty CSV file named model pricing.csv has been created. Wonderful, Ada. Can you go ahead and update the model pricing file? I've updated it with model prices. Just go ahead and get rid of the quotes for us and make sure that it's all snake case for our column headers. Nice job, Beta. Thank you. You're welcome, Dan. If you need anything else, just let me know. All right, so I hope you can kind of see where things are going with the power of AI assistance. When it comes down to it, AI assistants are going to accelerate our information rate. What does that mean exactly? I think at its very core, software engineering is about processing 
and manipulating information and then building systems that allow us to do it at scale. The combination of these incredible reasoning models with the new real-time API that gives us speech to speech capabilities is insane for engineering. We were able to work through three use cases for personal AI assistance for software engineering in particular. And I think that there are plenty, plenty more. We use about a quarter or a half of our tool set here. And uh, you know we were able to do a decent amount of work without uh, typing a single character. So I think that's really important. I think this is really powerful. And there's an interesting pattern for building AI assistance that I wanna share with you here. You saw me pull in data into active memory. This is basically a simple JSON file that probably should be built out into a full database. But the idea here is simple. As you're working with your AI assistant, do you want content to be loaded directly into active memory so that we can use it throughout other prompts? Just real quick to dip in the code a little bit. You can see here that we are constantly loading in the memory content. For instance, in our create file call, where we're actually generating new files, we're going to load the existing memory content from our active memory.json file into an XML block, right? So this gets fully loaded into the prompt when we're creating brand new files. So this is an interesting pattern that I think is going to be important on top of personalization, where we'll be able to customize our personal AI assistance. I think this pattern of having an active memory, kind of like a RAM, random access memory, I think this pattern is going to be really important moving forward. And over time, we're going to want our personal AI assistant to automatically manage their own memory as the conversation is going on, right? And this is all on top of the um, historical memory that is built up on top of the real-time API content, right? And that's probably a good next step to take for the personal AI assistant. It's to onload. So for instance, in the main file here, when we first load our assistant, we're going to want to be able to right away load our active memory into our assistant immediately. I think this is a massively important trend to pay attention to as software engineers. This code base is going to be in the description for you if you want to check out this next version of the real-time AI assistant. I feel like I'm probably 10 tools away from having a really complete, ultra-useful, software engineering-focused AI assistant that I can use in parallel, that can work in parallel with me while I'm building out software and getting things done. I can feel this tooling. I can feel the culmination of all these incredible AI tools changing the way I build, changing the way I think about building. This is all really incredible technology. I hope you can see where this is going. We're speaking in natural language to direct and control our personal AI assistant that can delegate work to a slew of specialized AI agents. We scraped content. We ran code, we generated a demo, we generated a proof of concept, we discussed the repository, and then we did some content reformatting. To be totally clear, a lot of this stuff you can do by hand on your own. I think that's really, really clear. We're engineers. We can move really quickly on the keyboard. But the advantage here, I think, of having a personal AI assistant with a focus in engineering is to run tasks in parallel to you and get work done in parallel to you. By just running a couple commands and by firing off a few tools and natural language, we can have our personal AI assistant get work done with us in parallel. I think when you combine that with the powerful reasoning agents, we can really set up high quality, long running agentic workflows that again are working in parallel with us as we move forward with our day-to-day -day tasks. The future is here. It's just not equally distributed yet. And to be fair, the tooling is still getting there but we get to see it first together here on the channel by building it stay focused and keep building i'll see you in the next one